let's pick up where we left off. We were um, midway through, or not way through, <laughs> introducing circular motion, right? So for the benefit of those who weren't here, or those whose brains have, you know, vacated the premises since yesterday, let's just remember, where did we begin? We went outside, we did our demonstration, and we looked at some vectors, we looked at them visually, and we saw, ooh, that was cool, but we saw, well, visually is nice, but we want something a little more concrete and um, manipulable than that, right? So what we did was we started to think about the horizontal and vertical components of uh, an object that is moving in, make sure I don't hurt anyone, moving in a circle, okay? So we want to understand this, we want to see what's going on, and so we thought, okay, as with projectile motion, we thought about horizontal and vertical components, and then we could go from there, right? So, do you remember, for displacement, what were our horizontal and vertical equations? We had an x equals and a y equals. x was equal to, and we thought parametrics, right? R times cos theta, we'll get to omega in a second, right? Omega comes in when we have to do the rate of change down to the next step. Conversely, y coordinate, you're going to get r sine theta. Good. So this is where we began. Now, as usual, when you go from displacement to velocity to acceleration, you're differentiating with respect to time. But then we noticed oh, that's not in terms of time, it's in terms of theta. So we had to do a little bit of chain rule fancy footwork, okay? But you may remember what we ended up with was we used our um, omega. Right? And you remember, what was omega about? What, what quantity is that? <coughs> omega is about angular velocity, right? In other words, it's the change in the angle as you're going around, okay? So just to remind you, that was d theta on dt, okay? So we got this result, sorry, I should have said dx on dt. And then you can play the similar kind of game with y, your vertical velocity, right? And this is r sine theta, so you don't get a negative out the front, you're just getting r omega <coughs> cos theta, okay? So, I think that's where I left you yesterday, right? When you're going down the ladder and you're differentiating with, res with respect to time again, you have to do the same kind of thing. You've got to introduce omega again because you're still not with respect to time, okay? So, you're getting, this is the second derivative, we'll do the x's first. So it's just the derivative of this. Derivative with respect to time of minus r omega sine theta, right? The radius and the angular velocity in uniform circular motion, that's what this is all about, they're both constants. So I'm just going to rip them out the front. Okay. Minus r omega, okay? And simultaneously, I don't want to differentiate with respect to time. I want to differentiate with respect to theta. Right? So I do this, I say, well, let's make that with respect to theta. I've got a sine theta in there. But to compensate, I need to multiply by d theta on dt. There's the chain rule thing happening there. So your d theta's d can't, d theta's d cancel. Your d theta's cancel, leave you with that dt that you had with at the start. So far, so good? That's just omega. That omega is going to come out here. It'll become minus r omega squared. And then the derivative of the fine is just cos. That's good, okay? Now, you can do exactly the same thing over here. I'm just going to kind of skip it because it's relatively trivial, right? Similarly, it's going to be exactly the same except with cos instead of sines and so on. You're going to get d squared y on dt squared, the vertical acceleration, okay? It's going to be minus r omega squared. You do the same thing. And that cos is going to turn into a sine. Okay, so then there's only a quick hop from acceleration to force. What's the difference between acceleration and force? Mass. Good, so we're just going to multiply. So this is, um, we traditionally call these, you know, F for force, but I've got two different forces here, and in a second I'm going to get two more, right? So I'm going to call this the X one and the Y one, just so I can distinguish. And it's just going to be this times mass. Force is mass times acceleration, right? So you're getting minus m r omega squared that and minus m r omega squared that cool this is good 